コーンをフィーチャーした重厚なサウンド音楽で理想の世界を築こうという強いメッセージ宇宙のファンタジーにはアースウィンドアンドファイヤーの神髄があった It's hard to have the space. And everybody, everybody relates to fantasy. Because in your fantasy, you can do many things. And life is a fantasy. My life at disco is different than that. It's different. It's more, more of a listen, listenable, listenable song rather than a dance. You, you sort of listen and you try to take it in. That's important. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's really a story, and it tells tells a story. It just you just follow it very closely, and that's what makes it different. Like like most of the songs, are about min min miniature movies, because you get a vision, and and seeing the song, certain certain people have different visions of the song. But if it's whatever appeals to you, whatever whatever fires you up, so it comes comes to that point. And that, that's very important for us to reach reach the soul and the hearts of people. So we play to the to the heart. That's our objective. ステージとともにアースウィンドアンドファイヤーは70年代後半のシーンを席巻強力なリズムセクションモーリス・ホワイトとフィリップ・ベイリーのツインボーカルそこに広がる音の宇宙に世界は陶酔した。
アメリカ西海岸ロサンゼルスアースウィンドファイヤーはこの街から数々のヒットを世に送った。宇宙のファンタジーの作詞作曲を手がけたリーダーのモーリス・ホワイト90年代からパーキンソン病を患いながらもプロデュースなど着実な活動を続けているそれは。モーリス・ホワイトがそのキャリアをスタートさせたのはジャズとブルースの街シカゴだったジャズドラマーだったモーリスは1966年からラムゼイ・ルイスのバンドに加わり数々の録音で腕を振るった。その頃ブラックミュージックは大きくその幅を広げつつあった公民権運動の60年代からその先へファンキーなサウンド新たなソウルが台頭していく。シカゴでソルティ・ペパーズというバンドを結成していたモーリスも1970年ロサンゼルスへと拠点を移し新たなサウンドを探求する。西海岸での再出発にあたりモーリスはバンド名を改めたアースウィンドアンドファイヤー土と風と火それはモーリスが信じる先生術と宇宙論から来ているそれまでのバンドにはない大きな世界観の表明だった。モーリスが夢見たものそれは音楽の力で人種も国籍もない
理想の世界を作り出すことだった。アフリカの楽器カリンバモーリスはこの遠いふるさとの音色をバンドサウンドの中に印象的に取り入れた広げていくアースウィンドファイヤーは人種も国籍も超えたヒットを次々と生み出していった。中盤からアメリカではダンサブルなヒット中が次々に登場ディスコミュージックがチャートを席巻していくした1977年その立役者は映画「サタデー・ナイト・フィーバー」。
そして宇宙のファンタジーを収める「アースウィンド・ファイヤー」のアルバム「太陽神」だった<音楽>それはもはやブラックミュージックの枠を超えた画期的なアルバムだったジャケットにはメンバーの写真ではなくピラミッドや神殿といったエジプトのイメージが全面に描かれかつてない時空を超えた壮大なスケールを感じさせた And we, we definitely believe in, well, I, I definitely believe in eternity and, and past lives and all that. Egypt, I, I, it's always related to it. And it was something that was very secretive. So I, I studied Egyptology to learn more about it. But it was a major influence in, in directing the group to a certain, in a certain direction. Anyway, like the Egyptians was part of the old and the new. And so we just took, took that as a, a symbol and utilized part, some characters from the Egyptian、uh, background. And it, it, it worked. It, created, it, it, it made us stand alone, stand apart from the rest of the groups. イラストレーター長岡修正精緻な宇宙的イメージを描き出す記載がアルバム「太陽神」のビジュアルを手がけたこれはですねモーリスがあのこういうふうなものをこういうふうなものを全部含んだジャケットを作りたいと、まあ、説明したんですね。これはあのアフリカの楽器のカリンバですね。これはピラミッドの中の目それからこれは目の裏あのユダヤの,あの7つの種族を表した食台ですねキャンドルライトこれはあのジュピターのマークですねここにまあいろいろ書いてもギリシャのシンボルとかですねブッダとかえシェイクスピアとかですねモーリス自身が書いたメモには彼のイメージするアイテムが細かく記されていたカリンバやピラミッドさまざまなシンボルブッダ楽器宇宙船シェイクスピア。完成した見開きジャケットの内側はモーリスの精神世界そのものだったあここはねまあまあつながりですね、うん、宇宙時代ですんでピラミッドと未来建築モーリスがエジプトに見た過去と未来が共にある世界ここを拡大してみてくださいあのこのエジプト文字ですけどねあのこの中にあの風林火山という字を4回ごまかして書く混ぜて書いてありますから
アースウィンドアンドファイヤーという言葉自体がね東洋の五行から来てるわけですからね占いのねあの気づかれないようにね私もやっぱりね日本の人に気づいてもらいたいなあと密かに思ってたもんだからそれからだなあれから10年ぐらい経ったけど誰も気が付かなかったからとうとう自分からしゃべりましたけどね。このアルバムはディスコブームのただ中で「アースウィンドアンドファイヤー」をメガヒットアーティストへと押し上げた世界各国でヒットを記録それは人類共通の音楽を目指すモーリスの理想を形にするものだったこのアルバムの鍵となる曲それが「宇宙のファンタジー」だった Yeah. Yeah. Forever, it seemed. But I finally went to see、uh, Close Counters of the Third Kind, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, which was an extraterrestrial movie. So I came, I came, I saw the movie, and it, it impressed me. And I was so inspired that I came back to the hotel and wrote, wrote all the lyrics. But it happened, happened one night. I wrote all of this and this came out. Every lyric I tried just didn't work. But finally, finally, after seeing that movie, I was inspired to write a lyric. It just flowed out. Just like, just like somebody was talking to me. Yeah, it was somewhere in my, in, in my, in my head. In my, it's just a matter of finding it, tuning into that, that, that vibration. ハリウッドサンセット大通りにほど近いスタジオでレコーディングは行われた<音声>タイトなリズムに重厚なホーン華やかなストリングス鉄壁のサウンドはここで生み出された。サウンドをまとめ上げたのは幾多のレコーディング機器の開発でも知られるトップエンジニアジョージ・マッセンバーグ。Well, there's more effort in the detail in fantasy. There were more overdubs and more、uh, thought that went into the mixing. September and the sing a song. Just straight ahead. Just go in and. Fantasy was more orchestration and more detail and more、uh, dream of,、um, of what the song could be. More complexity. And then fitting together the complexity so that on the surface you could hear a song, and then as you dug down into it, there was more and more detail. Well, for instance, there, there, there's one thing that we did on、uh, Fantasy where you know, the very top, bang, 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 that's a half speed piano. Because I really wanted a harpsichord, but you know, nobody would go with me on the harpsichord. So Larry Clint came in and when Maurice wasn't there, and we did this half speed piano that sounded like a, a little bit more like a harpsichord. Tonally and texturally, that fits that, that picture. We would never take in time on any of those other tracks.
I remember Verdine's bass was an overdub. Dun ga 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 You know, that thing. It was an overdub that he... And I don't think he'd disagree, and I basically performed, because I was doing sweeps on an equalizer. You know, you turn it up, wow, all that stuff. That was an EQ that, that I was turning up and watching him and sort of courting that that was a, a performance. I remember the uh, the sessions for the strings. It was a really great string arrangement. And I remember the big horn um, ensemble, and I remember mixing it. It was just great, a lot of fun. Strings to horn no arrangement in Chicago from Thomas Washington. 通称トムトム84が招かれた。シカゴソウルを代表する名アレンジャーが宇宙のファンタジーに艶やかな色彩を添えた。Keeping the rhythm feeling tight, punchy, and giving it that because fantasy is a harmonic tune, giving it that that beautiful harmonic support, and the strings are part of that. But strings take up a lot of space, so something was always wanting to push the strings back. Mind you, all this was 24 track, so you know there was a a, a lot of effort. And it wasn't their effort. This is my effort to try to keep enough tracks to put horns on by the time we got there. Because they just used tracks until they were gone. You know, there's a whole thing that we used to have to do that we don't have to do anymore with track management. Now that's the whole idea, is to build, build a pyramid. So you have different, different sections playing different things. So everybody makes a contribution. And that's, that's the most important thing. Is making a contribution. It's multi-layered. It has a, we have an orchestra behind us, then we have the rhythm section playing, playing what it plays, and it, it all, all works against each other. Always just would throw things on tape, you know, guitar parts. Hey, and I got another idea. You'd throw it on tape. And on percussion, I did throw it on tape. And it was kind of my job to separate these, and very often. What I brought these mixes were you can hear everything. You can hear drums, you can hear the guitars, you can hear the keyboards, you can hear the strings, you can hear the chords. It's not just one big wall of noise. Separating instruments by, by EQ, equalization. Um, bringing up parts of instruments to make them uh, shine, making sure that the vocal is, is always hearable, it is always. Um, Big. But on top of this, Maurice always wants more kick, so he's down here sneaking the kick up, you know. And, and you know, in mixing, everything changes everything else. So uh, Maurice generally would ask for more, more vocal and more kick. And I'd be trying to get a great horn sound and, and to make the overall feel work. Not so much um, bringing parts forward, but But just make the whole thing locked together, and it was always a fight, you know, because you always, always keep pushing it up. Later, I did this thing where I gave him a fader, and I had the real kick down here. Side by side, with care and care, the first song. The Ultimate Fantasy was. 78年にアルバムからシングルカットされたもののアメリカではチャート32位とヒットせずに終わったところが日本では大ヒット「アースウィンドファイヤー」を象徴するナンバーとなっている私は知らなかったけど私は知らなかったけど私は知らなかった That tells me、um, not what to do again, 
but it tells me uh, what to look for in Japanese culture that might uh, have been reflected in this song. I wish I knew. I think part of what fantasy uh, the, the, the tracks had were, were not sort of rock and roll performances, but they were detailed performances that you would interpret your own way. ホップシーンから宇宙のファンタジーを大胆にサンプリングしたナンバーが登場した That's, that's, the, that's the key to writing a good song, is the melody sound, sound like you heard it before, when you didn't really, <laughs> but it seems like you heard it before, and that, that familiarizes you with the song. You can get lost in the, in, in, in the music, so when you're lost, you're found, and that's, that's what's happening. That's the purpose of the whole thing, is to liberate people. And, and, and you leave the, leave the show with something you can cherish. And that, that's what that's all about. メーカーとなったアースウィングアンドファイヤーはディスコブームとともに走り続け人々を熱狂させた。しかしメッセージ性の強い彼らのスタイルは次第に世の求めるものではなくなりその音楽も変化を余儀なくされていく。1983年のエレクトリック・ユニバースでは彼らはホーンセクションを捨てコンピューターサウンドを大胆に導入した。移ろう時代の中でアースウィンドファイヤーは今なお活動を続けているアルバム「太陽神」そして「宇宙のファンタジー」グループの長い歴史の中で大きなマイルストーンとなったこの作品には人類共通のグルーブを目指した彼らの理想がしっかりと刻まれている。That, that, that's because we are all of this generation, and we have a tendency to think, think somewhat alike. And that's, 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 what, that's the, the button that that song pushes, 
and everybody. Everybody who listens and really listens. Listen, listen from the heart. It's, it's really a jewel. It's one of it's very, very few songs make you feel like that. Dream. 